Today we're going to be talking about a multi-day tornado event that starts today and will likely be lasting through Wednesday. First off, here's the Storm Prediction Center outlook for today. We have a large enhanced risk of severe weather from eastern Texas all the way up to the Memphis, Tennessee area and the Missouri Boot Heel. So this is a large enhanced risk of severe weather. Severe storms are going to be most likely in this area for today and tonight. The main threats here are going to be tornadoes and damaging winds. So here's a look at that tornado outlook. In this yellow shaded region, that means that you have a 10% chance of getting a tornado in your area. So this does include Little Rock, this does include Shreveport, and this also includes Memphis mainly after dark. It looks like there's going to be two rounds of severe weather, but we can't rule out an isolated tornado as far northward as St. Louis and the Kansas City area as well. So we will continue to keep an eye on it here. Here's your damaging wind outlook. 30% uh, chance of damaging winds in your area in this red shaded region, so that's a pretty high threat. And that's mainly because we're going to be seeing two rounds of severe weather. We're also talking about some potential for some hail, but that threat is relatively relatively low. So, First off, let's take a look at the HRRR model here, the high-resolution uh, rapid refresh model. And we are speeding this up to 1 p.m. Central Time here, which I'm hoping is going to be right around when this video gets posted. Uh, and we're going to have upper 60s to low 70s dew points across Louisiana and eastern Texas here. we got a very moist environment in place. Just remember that we don't just need moisture for severe weather. We need a lot of instability as well. And that could be a problem today. We'll talk about why in just a second. It's going to be a problem, but it's going to be a pretty good problem because it probably means that we're not going to have a widespread tornado outbreak. So that's, of course, always going to be a good thing. We'll talk about why that is in just a second. We're also going to have a lot of CAPE in the area as well, or energy. CAPE stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. The more of it that we have, basically just the more growing the thunderstorms can do if they work with this stuff in the area. We got a lot of bright colors on the screen here, indicating an unstable environment across the Arklatex region here, and the storms will use that to their advantage. Now, here's what the radar is likely going to be looking like at 1 p.m. We're going to have lots of storms across eastern Texas and into southeastern Oklahoma here near Idabel, Oklahoma. Uh, e this is east of Dallas west of Shreveport. This is all going to be moving off to the northeast, so we'll take this hour by hour. Notice the stuff becoming more numerous as we head into the 3 p.m. hour. Little Rock, watch out around 2 or 3 p.m. here, as we could have some storms in the area. And if they are separated enough and able to utilize the ingredients in the area, it is possible that these could produce tornadoes. But as we take that a few hours later, notice this new stuff trying to develop across northeastern Texas and into eastern Oklahoma here. This stuff may have even better chances of producing tornadoes tornadoes if it's able to utilize the ingredients, but there's a problem in place for that to happen. The main one is going to be that all this stuff here across Arkansas and moving into the Mississippi River Valley here what that is doing is it's eating up all the instability in the area, or at least a, a good chunk of it before it recovers. Remember that thunderstorms need a, an uncapped, unstable environment, and if they don't have that, if there's a bunch of clouds and precipitation in the area, it's going to be really tough for those storms to utilize the ingredients and really become severe. So the good news is we have a bunch of rainfall across Arkansas and Mississippi, and hopefully that suppresses how intense this next round of storms is going to be. But we will see, as this model here is showing, I'm getting pretty intense as we get towards the 3 or 4 p.m. hour. And then once we get beyond that, you can see these waves of storms trying to move into Arkansas. We could definitely have a threat of severe weather after dark once we get closer to midnight across Little Rock again, once we see a squall line developing, and then that gradually moves into the Mississippi River. But here's a look at your low-level jet here. This is your lower-level jet stream. The stronger that this is, if we also have an unstable environment and those discrete separated storms, it's really going to make the environment dangerous but for potential tornadoes. We're not going to see much discrete activity after dark, but we could definitely see some kinks in the line that could produce tornadoes and damaging winds, and that is all influenced by the strong low-level jet, and these winds are turning with height, so we have strong wind shear as well. Uh, this continues along closer to the Mississippi River as we get towards midnight and eventually beyond midnight. This is going to cross into Mississippi and into western Tennessee. Now, another thing that we definitely have to consider for today is going to be the flood threat. Uh, we have a moderate risk of excessive rainfall from Little Rock into western Kentucky and extreme southern Illinois as well. And that is because we're going to be looking at two to four inches of rainfall. It looks like the bullseye is going to be right around Memphis, uh, east of Little Rock, towards Memphis, towards the Mayfield and Bowling Green, Kentucky area, towards the Missouri Boot Heel. That's the highest potential to get two to four inches of rain. And of course, where you see training storms over the same area, those totals could be a little bit higher or a little bit lower. Now, the problem is the severe weather does not end today. We have another significant risk of severe thunderstorms for tomorrow as well across Dixie Alley. 
Uh, this is again in the form of an enhanced risk of severe weather from eastern Louisiana into southern Mississippi and central Alabama as well. The main threat here is going to be tornadoes. Uh, we have again a 10% hatch risk of tornadoes. Uh, some of these tornadoes could be strong, meaning that they could be EF2 or greater. Same goes for today. Uh, and tomorrow's looking like a really interesting severe weather event. We could be looking at isolated tornado potential all the way up into Elizabethtown and Louisville, Kentucky tomorrow, maybe even into uh, southern Indiana as well. So this is a broad stretching tornado and severe weather event, but the main tornado potential should be confined to the deep south. Damaging winds also definitely on the table all the way up into central Tennessee, and the hail threat really is low tomorrow. Uh, let's take a look again at our high resolution model by tomorrow morning. We're going to see that those squalls and those clusters of storms trying to move across the Mississippi River into the state of Mississippi and western Tennessee. But as we get about four hours later, closer to about 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, we're going to see these storms trying to make their way closer to areas like New Orleans, uh, closer to southeastern Mississippi here. And these storms are going to be out ahead of the cold front. They're going to be separated. And these ones, if they're able to utilize the ingredients, could definitely become tornadic. And that's going to be a major problem uh, once we get closer to the noon hour and beyond that. Now, another thing I'm definitely watching, let me take that back for a second. Notice these new separated storms trying to develop across central Alabama, closer to Birmingham, and also northern Mississippi as well. I'm not exactly sure how the air mass is going to recover over there, but if it does, and these storms are able to utilize the moisture and the wind shear that we have, these could easily be discrete supercells capable of producing tornadoes. So we'll definitely have to watch that even on the northern extent of the tornado risk tomorrow. The rest of it's going to be confined to areas like New Orleans and southeastern Mississippi, closer to the Jackson area. We're going to have, again, a lot of cape in the area. Area, a lot of energy for these storms to utilize. The lower level jet stream is going to be ripping from the southwest here, bringing in all that rich gulf moisture and increasing the lower level wind shear. And as we get a couple hours later, the stuff's going to continue intensifying. Look at all this new stuff trying to develop across northern Mississippi and into central uh, Alabama. Tomorrow is looking like a very interesting severe weather setup, potentially a significant tornado setup, possibly a messy tornado outbreak tomorrow. Uh, we are definitely watching this very carefully, and if needed, I will have um, more updates once we get closer to tomorrow. Now, as we get closer to midnight, we're going to still be looking at widespread thunderstorms across eastern Mississippi into Georgia. I would assume we can still get some severe weather out of this, but it probably is going to be winding down with that loss of daytime heating, that loss of instability, all those storms already in the area. And then as we head into Wednesday morning, it's just going to pretty much be storms along the cold front across Georgia, Alabama, and the uh, Florida Panhandle. Now, we're not going to talk much about Wednesday's severe weather threat because the high resolution data isn't really up to date yet, but we do have a marginal risk of severe weather from the Florida Panhandle all the way into North Carolina, maybe even Southern Virginia as well. This is just a level one out of five risk at this time, so not a huge deal, but it could get upgraded as we get closer. We're talking about maybe a couple tornadoes and also a damaging wind threat as well. This includes, uh, some pretty major city areas across the southeast here, so we'll have more updates on this as well. Isolated tornado potential continues on Wednesday, but it should be done by Thursday. So guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you did enjoy it and you want to see more of them, be sure to subscribe to the channel with those post notifications turned on, and also be sure to drop a like on the video if you guys want other people to get this information as well. But until the next video or live stream, stay safe, and I will talk to you guys back here next time.